Welcome back to Java for Beginners. In this lesson, we will learn about making decisions. I hope you have already reviewed tutorials 1 through 4 and uh, know how to run simple Java applications and you understand variables, data types and assignments. The objectives of this lesson are to learn about the if statement along with its else clause. We will also learn about getting inputs from the user to make the programs a little more interesting and I will talk a little bit about the coding style. Now I want to make a statement about my teaching style. We are going to talk about programming constructs and you need to follow the syntax, the grammar. I did not learn English or Java programming by learning grammar first. So I will attempt to teach programming by examples you probably should refer to the recommended text for this class to learn finer syntax rules. Let's come back to the if statement. So here is an example. If you want to selectively execute part of a program, one way to do that is to use the if statement. The, the if statement executes a block of code only if the specified expression is true. If the value is false, then the if block is kept and execution continues with the rest of the program. You can either have a single statement or a block of code within an if statement. The conditional expression must always be a boolean type. It means it must evaluate to a either true or false. Some programming languages consider zero as false and non-zero as true, but not Java. Java's boolean type has no numeric equivalence. So let's look at this example. It, it is asking if a greater than b. a greater than b is going to evaluate to either true or false and if it is true it's going to print this statement. Then the next question we are asking is a less than b and if that is true it's going to print that statement. So you may want to try this program yourself, try changing a and b and see the answer that you get. Now in this example we have two distinct if statements, each one independent of the other. However for the question that we are asking only one can be true. So we can actually write it by using the else clause which is on the next page. So here the question we are asking is a greater than b and if that's not true everything else goes under else. So what would cause it to go under the else clause. If a was less than b or a was exactly the same as b. So that is going to be captured by the else clause. Here is a better way to write the if statement. I consider this a better style. Here we are asking if a greater than b then I have an open brace, close brace. So I'm putting the block of code even though in this case it happens to be one statement under those braces. And again I do the same thing for the else clause. Using this style called a block f is much easier to read than the previous example that I showed you. Here is another example which more accurately represents the situation we have. We are asking three distinct questions. Is a greater than b? If not, is A exactly the same as B? And if that's if either one of these two statements are not true, it's going to go under the else clause accurately because in this case B would be greater than A. So this is a better way to write an if statement. The relational operators. You saw this slide in my earlier lecture. So these are the operators that are available for use in an if statement, in an if statement's expression. Now let's take a side trip. Let's talk about making the programs a little more interesting. The program that we have seen so far, the inputs A and a B are all built in. What I like to do is to write a program such that I can actually enter the values of the inputs and the program would make decisions based on those. So here is a sample program. So first let's try running this program and see what we get. 
so in this case if you run the program it's going to ask enter name and age you enter name on line one and age on the other and then it it is able to read that information it says you entered name as John Smith and age 21 press any key to continue so now let's talk about how this program works you need to include an import statement we need another class to be able to read this information then we print a message saying what uh, the user should be entering and then there is a scanner class used for reading the inputs and then you use again the scanner class instance to read the name which is the name that the user entered and on the following line an integer value which is the age and it's able to print out these values so that's what we got here I converted one of my earlier examples now here I have two variables declared a and b it's going to say enter two numbers and uh, here when you enter these numbers it's going to read the first number as a second number as b it's going to make decision based on the inputs that you provided and you can continue running this program again and again with different inputs if you run this program this is what it's going to look like it's going to ask you enter two integers you enter 43 and 56 and 43 is A, 56 is B and of course the situation here is that B is greater than A. As you can tell my code examples are getting longer and longer such that these are hard to fit on one slide. So hereafter I'm going to assume that you already know what the template looks like. You may have an import statement, the class declaration, the main, end main and end class. So in the examples hereafter I may not show the whole template. I will only show the code that goes inside. So in case if you want to try my example set up a template like that, insert the code I have and you should be able to run my examples. And all my examples, complete examples are available on my website. Next we'll talk about the switch statement or the switch case statement. Unlike an if statement, the switch statement takes exactly one input and that input should be a whole number, a small whole number. That number can only be of the type byte, short, int or a char. In this case it's of the type int and depending on what it was, you have one or more case values which are used for making different decisions. Is it is month one, then it's going to print January, is month two, then it's going to pr print February and so forth. At the end of each case statement, you can have a break statement. If you don't use the break statement, it will continue on to the next case statement. Just a little bit about the coding style that you might have already noticed the indentation. You notice that certain statements were indented in the examples that I had been showing you. Even though Java compiler does not care whether you place your statements relative to each other, how you place your statements relative to each other, indenting the code helps making the code more readable. It turns out that when programming, programmers spend 90% of their time reading the code and 10, only 10% 10 of the time writing new code. So you should try to make your code readable unless of course you are worried about your job security. Basically you indent one level after each opening brace. So this is where the class begins opening brace so I, I indent the code here. Further when I open an if statement I indent the code further. Okay so we are done with this lesson. In the next lesson we will learn about writing loops, the for loop and the do while loop. Thank you.